If you caught our video last week, you know that we got a brand new front door to install, but before we even got started, things went downhill. I don't think it's gonna fit, and I don't know what to do about it. We're gonna lose some windows. Are we cool with that? This goes in this hole, no. and the devil goes in the top one. Yeah! But after having our plans shifted from a small project to a massive project, we finally got this thing installed at about 10 p.m. But this project was far from finished, so this week we're doing whatever it takes to finish the installation of our new front door. So welcome to the adventures of my DIY wife and her non-handy husband. Are we dragging a little bit today or even the weather looks tired, hey, man. Look She's... at that front door, it looks so pretty. It's not even stained yet, but I've been dreaming of replacing our door with the Hobbit lock so ever since we moved into this house. She really has been thinking about replacing the door for so long. Cause not only is it kind of weird, it was also just janky. It didn't close right. I was like, is that a ghost? Yeah. had a bunch of knots and cracks in it it hadn't been maintained the previous owners were parents that rented it out to college students for several years and so it's like a lot of the house for four or five years just was not taken care of it was a mess when we got it so that's why it was a fixer-upper and we got it for a great deal but we had to do a great deal of work to make it a great space but we stayed up last night till 10 so we're dragging a little bit today all right so what are we we doing right now we're stealing sheetrock from our friend's house they have helped us and Don't. so we will steal their sheetrock like that's the payment you help us we steal your sheetrock it's a film and carry i'm doing double duty here easy peasy man we just had to scoop my seat forward a little bit it's all right though i mean i have plenty of leg room texas stop sign it feels like we're driving through a cloud it's like foggy and dreary it's I mean, so dreary this is like a drink a warm drink and read a book and curl up on the couch kind of day yeah or uh stay up late get up early and then work on a new front door kind of day you know it's also one of those days we are back again ladies and gentlemen you know it where else would we be the start of a work day you know what i'm saying in lowe's we grabbed all of the materials we needed to finish trimming out the inside and the outside of the door would you just look at all this wood it's incredible This is what the ceiling of Lowe's looks like. Just want to show you. Wait. She leaves me to check out while she goes and gets another mug. That's all right. I'll find a little something of my own. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy when you got a minivan. Be kind, put your basket back. Oh, there we go, yeah. I've got so much room up here, you know what I'm saying? Framed in like a sardine. What? Sardine? sardine? No oh way! Gosh, yeah, thanks for having off on me. <laughs> Once we got back, we unloaded all of our materials and we're ready to get to work. All right, so we just picked up all of the drywall, the trim, everything that we need to get this finished. We have our drywall guys that we always hire for any drywall projects coming over really soon. And so before they get here, I'm gonna add another two by four on the inside so they have something on this side to attach the drywall to and then put a little bit of insulation in those gaps so it is all ready whenever they get here to finish that out. And we'll see what we can work on while they're doing that. <laughs> hey, the sun's coming out. Oh, wow. It's so pretty in our new window. Aww. These are so much better than those little side lights. getting the extra two by fours put in place I started cutting down insulation to put in that last little gap how'd you get a big old roll of cotton <laughs> 
I finished this right on time because just as I was finishing, our drywall guy showed up. We're ready, roll them. Oh no. <laughs> Look at that beautiful face. <laughs> they were able to patch, tape, and float all of this in record speed. And this is why I always hire this out because they are the professionals and are able to come in here and do this 10 times faster than I would be able to. Once this dries, they'll come back and float it again. And then after that dries, they'll come back one last time to texture everything before we paint. You got some crispy frisbees. <laughs> so I'm just gonna lightly sand because even though this is brand new, there's just still those little fuzzy splinters sticking out. So I'm just gonna take care of those. We'll vacuum it, wipe it with a tack cloth, and then we can actually start trying out our stains. It's nice outside. Okay, so I did a quick sanding on it and I'm gonna vacuum it off really quick and then go over it with a tack cloth again lay down some paper, and then we'll start staining it. While we waited for the drywall mud to dry, it was finally time to start staining our new door. Wiping the door down with a tack cloth helps to remove all of the little bits of dust before we move on to stain. Once the door was all clean, I laid down some paper and removed the hardware so I could start staining. I had a couple of different stain options to try, but after putting on the first color, it ended up being perfect, and so we went with golden oak. I like that. That's darker. I think maybe just because I think this door is mahogany, I'm going to just do golden oak. I like it. Let's do it. Applying the stain was so exciting because it completely changed the look and was looking a lot more like the vision that I had in my head. Oh, this is like perfect. This is just the color I wanted. It's so pretty. And it's not even like finished. It's like the drywall is all messed up and like, man, there's so much more light. That's, that's crazy. Oh. Once I finished thinning the inside of the door, I started on the outside and continued the process. Good looking door. Yeah, it's quite hot, isn't it? You would think for mid-October in Texas it would start cooling down, but... It's about 91 degrees outside. Yeah, here in Texas we like to hit, you know, the 90s in mid-October. Once I finished staining the door, I turned the fan back on to help it and the drywall dry, and we got some exciting news. Our session was coming tomorrow. Tomorrow? It's a good week. You're all kinds of excited. New front door, sectionals coming in. You're over there looking at that door again. Okay, we gotta walk around the back to get to the front. I'll follow you, as usual. <gasps> you're an angel! You know those days when you just wake up and you're like, you know what, it's a good hair day. I mean, it's a pretty good hair day. Do you, are you having a good hair day? I'm oh good, you're back out here because I'm getting super weird. We need to get back on the job. Oh gosh. Walking around the back of the house. I was inside singing it, but why is our house so dirty right there? What, what? in the world? Are you some kind of squirrel? Oh my gosh. Look at the door, bang. So a little hard to capture on camera with that giant shadow right yeah, there. Like the next step in the process was getting the trim on the outside of the door all finished. Okay, so I've measured it out. I'm gonna start cutting a quarter inch plywood. That's what we're gonna use to cover all of this instead of trying to mess with hardy board, which is incredibly hard to cut. You have to have special blades for it. It's also really toxic. And since this is under a covering, once we get it covered with all of our good exterior paint, that will work just fine. So we're using all wood to cover it and then trim it out. See how much we can get done before we have to pick up our kids. 
probably be stopping right after we start. <laughs> First, I cut down quarter inch plywood, which will go over all of the green sheathing before we add the trim. I also went ahead and added some more flashing from the edge of the door to the sheathing and over any of the seams that I had left exposed. If you remember from last week's video, I mentioned that I attached this green exterior plywood with a brad nailer so we didn't have to get this noisy air compressor out at night. You're just the most annoying little machine there ever was. Yes, you are. Oh, uh, so serious. <laughs> Let's hope this little compressor can handle it. So now I'm coming back with a bigger nailer to attach both the quarter inch plywood and the green exterior sheathing to the studs. After I finished attaching all of the plywood, I started cutting down pre-primed 1x3s to trim out all around the door. After I finished attaching all of the trim around the door, I went back to our sunroom to switch out the laundry and found a very unwanted surprise. What is it? There's a mouse. Yeah. On top of our laundry. Oh, there it is. I'm gonna attempt to remove picture number one first. It's all or nothing right here. Once I calmed down from the little mouse incident, I was ready to get back to work on the front door. All right, so I am about to put the first coat of top coat on the door inside and out. And I've done a lot of reading since we had a wood door before on what is the best sealer for it. And this is the one that is most commonly recommended. I think that's easy to get locally and it's, I'll link it, but it's Helmsman Spar Urethane in the satin because I'm not a big fan of like the semi-gloss finish. And so I'm gonna brush it on, should go pretty quick. Got the hardware still off, the glass is still covered from buying it, which is so nice. We'll see, all right. Okay, first coat done. That actually went on really easily with the brush and it needs to dry for at least four hours and so that's why I went ahead and did that first and I'm hoping I can get another coat before we go to bed tonight. But in case we don't film that, I'm gonna do a light sanding with either 220 or higher and then do a second coat, third coat, however many coats, maybe three on the outside because we get a lot of direct sunlight and this helps protect the wood from that. So next I'm actually going to re-chisel out the place for the stripe plates on the door frame because the manufacturer put them in the wrong place. I bought a couple of new chisels today at Lowe's. I'm gonna see how this goes, hopefully. It doesn't look a mess. Thankfully, the chiseling was relatively straightforward and I was able to pretty easily move both strike plates down so they're aligned perfectly. Okay, so that's actually way easier than I thought. I haven't ever tried chiseling out for the strike plate and stuff. I know you're supposed to do it with a router. With this already installed, the chisel seemed way less complicated and I think it was actually kind of fun. So close to being done, I can't believe we did all of this. <laughs> oh boy. So it's time for a Lowe's trip this morning. Gonna make it happen, but we're kind of pooped, man. A Lowe's trip, a Lowe's trip. Every single day, it's a low strip. I just want to take a nap. They've got so many moms out here.
I personally don't believe in baskets. Good looking door. After my morning lows trip, it was time to do a little bit of cleanup in the front yard. You know when the red gloves go on, it's getting serious. I'm gonna use this as a raft. This works. Oh, like a dream. Raft number two. Oh, it's heavy. <coughs> and right as I finished the front door, we had an exciting delivery show up. I do not envy that job, ladies and gentlemen. No, I don't. Right in the middle of it all, drywall shows up. Shoot, are you serious? It's perfect timing, really. They're on the phone. She's on the phone. You watching the show? I'm watching the show. I'm like, oh, they're like, it looks like they're about, they've got it standing up on its end. And I don't want to give away too much here, but I have actually been working on a living room refresh for the past nine months. We'll be sharing that entire process in upcoming videos, including what new furniture we bought, some new furniture builds, and a recent trip to Round Top in search of some pretty specific treasures. So be sure to stay tuned. After an exciting break, it was time to get back to work on the front door. Before I could paint all of the newly installed trim, I needed to caulk everything, and since some of my gaps were pretty big, I used some foam baccarat to fill in the gaps before caulking. I don't know if this can be too Is that the anaconda? <laughs> Next, I caulked all of the seams and edges and then wiped away the excess with my finger. After I finished caulking, our drywall guys came back for their last trip to sand and then spray texture on all of the patched areas. One of the last things I had to do was finish out the trim on the inside of the door. Need you to get the saw, babe. You're up. Yeah! It feels like some sort of strange CrossFit workout. Gosh, it is nerve-wracking watching you carry it with your sandals on. That doesn't look like a CrossFit workout, does it? Can you just put it up there? <laughs> look, we built a workbench, guys. <laughs> look at this new workbench. Let's go measure. First, I went inside to check my measurements, and then I used my table saw to rip down a tongue and groove board to replace the boards that were missing on the bottom. Next, I measured and cut the casing for around the door. I finished the door casing, I realized I needed to rip down the tongue and groove boards a little bit more so they would butt right up flush to the casing instead of sitting behind it. I had a few more cuts to make and then I would finally be done with a trim on the inside of the door. 
wow. That is snug as a bug. The next day, it was time to start painting the outside around the door. I started by using painter's tape to tape off the areas I didn't want to get paint on. Once I finished taping everything off, I grabbed a brush and started painting. Once the first coat dried, I came out and did a second coat over everything. After that, I started taping off the inside areas for paint. Can you hear those bird sounds? It looks so good. Look at our new door and look at our lock. This is crazy. This is a smart lock. Look, I have to show you all this feature because we haven't shown you this before. So we had our level lock on our old door and we loved it, but we were so excited to get this new door installed and then see the beautiful new lock on the beautiful new door. We've mentioned before that we used to rent our house out on Airbnb and so we have always had smart locks on our doors and this is by far far the smallest smart lock that I have seen and I honestly recommend it over and over because it has such a small footprint and all of the technology is hidden right inside of the lock. Installation is super straightforward. The instructions are great that it comes with and you literally only need a screwdriver. We installed the level lock touch edition and when you set up the level app you have the option of making it where you can lock and unlock your door with a simple touch. We also have the option of using key cards which have come in really handy and there's even ones that you can hang on your keychain so you always have it with you when you leave the house with your car keys. And of course, we're able to lock and unlock our door from the app on our phone, whether we're here or even far away. Level locks are made with premium high quality materials and so I'm not worried about the durability of our locks. Level also has a keypad accessory which you saw us show at our friend's house where they installed a level lock. And this makes sharing a code with family and friends super easy, especially with the holidays coming up and probably a lot of people coming and going, you can share a code and have people get easy access to your house when they need it. So if you're interested in trying out Level Locks, be sure to check out our link in the description below and use code DIYWIFE10 for 10% off. In the end, this project definitely didn't go according to plan and was way more work than either one of us had anticipated. But now that it's finished, it turned out even better than I had hoped. And it is so fun to finally see this happen after dreaming of replacing this door for the last four years.
Well, what a project this was. I mean, there was literally 101 things you had to do on this door and there were so many unexpected roadblocks, but you nailed it. Yeah, I am so happy with how this door turned out. Like I've been dreaming of this for years. Like yeah. that door really needed to be replaced. And still every time I go by or go in and out the front door, I'm like, oh, it looks so much better. I love the light that it brings in. I love the stain color, just how that whole area is cleaner looking than it was before without the little side lights that were really like dust and dirt catchers to be honest it's just it all looks so good I'm so happy with how it's turned out yeah it's really made that space so much more inviting because honestly we've kind of avoided our front door most of the time because it didn't work well and really we've just kind of used our back door as our main entrance and so it's so nice to welcome people through our front door and it's just the perfect project to finish off the makeover of the front of our house so thanks for joining us on this DIY adventure and be sure to follow along next week because we're getting into <laughs> another very exciting project and we'll catch you there. Yeah. I, I bet I do have something. Oh, Look, nice. How but, may we help you? But. That is so cool. That's very cool. And it wasn't Oh, what are you doing? I'm yawning. I didn't know. You. Used our back door, kind of our, kind of our, kind of our, kind of sort of our. It's dude. The perfect project. Perfect project to finish off the. Stop. What? Peas are plosives. You have to really. Powerful peas. Do you know how much self-control it took to like just let you keep talking? <laughs> I think this is funny. It's gonna go super fast. Dude! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I was like, is she gonna smell or not? <laughs> Help us both out here. <laughs> Can you guys do this? Just doing my job to hold the ladder. No selfish motivations whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to take a quick pause and explain a question that we got a lot in our last video, and that is why couldn't we just trim down this new door to make it fit inside the old framing rather than tearing the whole wall open and reframing to fit the new door? First off, that is way easier than it sounds, and every door expert that I've talked to over the years when I was installing other doors and had questions said, do not do it that way. It's You think in your head, oh, this is simple, I'll just trim it down, but then actually routing out your hinge holes, even just that one thing alone is probably more difficult than reframing the entire wall. Esther's in the background, <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> when filming at home. Second, the frame that held our old door, that's the part that it goes around that your door is hung in, was actually already trimmed down. So whoever installed that door had shaved down the sides of it to get it to fit in that too small of an opening, which then made it where our frame was splitting and cracking and I just thought it was because it was old, but when we pulled it out I realized it was like less than a half inch thick so it was literally just splintering apart and it all needed to be replaced. So the moral of the story is, if you're gonna do DIY projects, make sure you do them right or the <laughs> next person up in line will pay for it. <laughs>